Structure contours are really powerful tools for displaying the three-dimensional geometry of geological boundaries. In the previous videos, we've been looking at simple planar boundaries where the structure contour patterns are essentially straight or near straight. But when we come to look at folded strata, we're going to have to be more flexible about the shape of structure contour patterns. So in this short video, we'll look at the idea of structure contour patterns in folds and we'll apply them to a classic map here for part of the Mendips in Western England. But let's start off thinking a little bit about how structure contour patterns are represented on folds dealing with some sponge layers. Well here's some sponge and it's folded over. Let's have a look at this side on. Here we go. Here's the sponge layer. And you can see this is an antiform and the hinge line is plunging top left, bottom right. So we're looking straight onto the side of one limb. So the structural contours on that limb are relatively straight because the limb is reasonably planar and they're equally spaced and running like this. And they'll hit the hinge line, which is here picked up by that um, brown skewer. Let's spin out and look down on this structure. There we go. And we can see the structure contours will inflict around the hinge line and come back on the other limb, where they'll also be reasonably straight and equally spaced because the limb is more or less planar. So we have a shape on these structure contours. Let's spin around. So here we are looking down on the structure contours on our sponge layer. The maximum curvature corresponds to the hinge line. There it goes, plunging down the screen. So on the limbs, which are more or less planar, the structure contours are more or less straight and more or less equally spaced. So we can use this pattern to trace out the shape of folds in three dimensions. Well, let's see how this works using this classic map for part of the Mendip south of Bristol around the village of Cheddar. And what we've got are these folded layers which make these outcrop patterns. We'll try and ignore these yellow rocks which are younger Triassic strata which overlie these fold structures unconformably. So let's try and see through the effects of the yellow blanket. Well it's worth thinking a little bit about what sort of fold we've got here first. And I can see from these uh, bedding symbols that the rocks here are dipping this way towards the south. And here in the north they're dipping north. So the layers are coming over into an antiformal structure. I can also see that there are uh, older rocks in the core, so this antiform is also an anticline. Okay, so let's represent this uh, fold structure with some foam to sort of appreciate it in three dimensions. So here's the old red sandstone, this brown material closing to the right, which I'll just represent with this pink foam. And we can put the blue limestones with our layer that we've already used um, here with its structure contour pattern on. And of course there's some green rocks which mask them, hiding like this. So we only see a part of the blue layer. So let's just pull this away and have a look. And you can see the structure contour pattern on our blue limestones will be straight on the limbs. And then if we put this flat, you can see that they get very curved in the hinge areas. So we can identify a hinge running like this, separating the two limbs, the northern limb and the southern limb. But the catch, of course, is that we don't really see very many places from which we can draw the contours. So what else can we use? Well, let's put our layers back on again, including our green layer that will sit on top, like this. And a feature is that the strike of the bedding in the overlying rocks will mimic the trend of the structure contours around the fold, provided these layers are more or less parallel bedded. So in a rock sequence, we can use the trend of bedding to tell us about the trend of the structure contours at depth. It's a really useful tool. Well, we haven't got very many contour picks we can use, but I'll just pick one and we'll draw a structure contour on the top of the Black Rock Limestone base of the uh, Burlington Oolite, which is this boundary here. And I can see that we can pick structure contours here to define a structure contour like this. 
and another couple of points here that must mean it swings across. I'm going to ignore the unconformity. So the structure contour must come along here. It's buried beneath the younger oolite, so it's going to come around like this and trend around the end of the fold, tracking this bedding trace, and it's going to appear again there, which is where the boundary intersects that topographic contour of 200 meters like that. So that's an idea of the shape of the structure contour. It could have come further over here, but not very far. That's more or less tracking the trend of bedding around the end of the fold. So the fold plunges in this direction with a limb on the south and a limb on the north, and this is the hinge area of our antiform defined by, in this case, the top of the black rock limestone. It's a really simple illustration of how we can use a structure contour pattern to tell us something about the fold shape in three dimensions from a two-dimensional representation, the geological map.